All right, guys. Um, I really appreciate you being here. And um, we're going to get started now. So happy Pacific Islander Heritage Month from Skyline College and from the ASSC and from our office, the Center for Student Life. Uh, we're proud to present our third workshop, which is a history on tongue and dance, featuring um, one of our contacts, Kuata Vainikolo. But for myself, he's actually my teacher. So I'm proud to be a student um, learning tongue and dance um, straight from somebody from the kingdom of Tonga. And um, I'm very grateful to have him here today to share with us uh, Faka Tonga, Faiva Faka Tonga, Tonga and performance, um, Tonga and culture. And so he's going to be talking about the history of the And if just some ground rules, if we could have everybody on mute. Um, and then also in between each section, if you have a question, go ahead and write in the chat that you'd like to ask a question. And then um, at the time that Kawata asks uh, if anyone has questions in between each part, then you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question if you'd like. Uh, and then there will be time at the end to discuss uh, any questions or any comments that you have about any of what he. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce Kuata Vainikolo, Director of Kuata's Performing Arts in East Palo Alto. Let's do this. Good afternoon and malolele. Welcome to Skyline College Pacific Islander Heritage 2020. Before I go on, I want to apologize in advance if you guys don't understand what I'm trying to say. English is my second language, but I'll do my best. I'm trying to, there we go, there we go. <clears throat> my name is Kuata by Nicolo, and today I will share with you a brief history of tongue and dance. I was born and raised in the island of Tonga in a village called Maufanga, which is next to the capital, Nuku'alofa. I grew up in a large family, one of 10 to be exact. And it's with most Polynesian families, familial connection are the utmost important as well as cultural identity. I remember as a young child singing and learning different dances Dance. for school, church, and social events. It's what brought our village and community together and something I look forward to every day. And because I was the youngest, I pretty much tag along with my mom at every dance practice, choir practice, and social gatherings. Dance came naturally to me. It's probably why I picked it up quickly and became attached to performing. So the arts was very much embedded in my upbringing. During my high school years, I learned from various composers, so they called punake, that allowed me to enhance my skills as a performer. An esteemed and well-known punake by the name of Malukawa from the, the village of Tatakamotonga became my mentor and influenced my passion for dance with his unique dance techniques. In 2001, I migrated to the United States and continued to stay connected with my roots through dance. In 2005, I began teaching tongue and dance to, to local religious youth groups in the community. And it was throughout this time, I realized that many of the youth that I was teaching were excited and eager to learn about their culture. 
want to teach them the fundamental basics of tongue and dance. From my experience, majority of the male youth who lived outside of Tonga dance according to what they see and learn from YouTube. And it's not a bad thing if you know how to dance. But when you are a beginner and you want to dance the traditional way, then the basics become an important part in progressing as a dancer and preserving the culture. And that's, and that's something I saw is that the fundamental, fundamental basics of tongue and dance, especially the, for boys, did it exist here in the States. I want to change that and share my knowledge of traditional dance with my students. In 2018, Quarters Performing Arts was established to preserve the culture through dance and learning. KPA is the first all-male tongue and dance group in the US. <clears throat> so let's get started. To date, there are over 12 tongue and dance styles. And I'll talk about most of the prominent dance that we use today, beginning with the first three types of group dance that existed at the time of European contact. The earliest and best description of tongue and dances comes from the Journal of the Voyages of Captain Cook. This gave us the best available idea of tongue and dance before it was influenced by Western culture. The first description is of the battle dance or the me'et upaki was when he observed it at a reception in Hapai on May 20th, 1777. And it was consisted of 105 men. Me'et upaki translate as dance, me'e, standing, du'u, with battles, paki. This is an all male dance. And according to Tongans and historians, the Metu Paki has remained unchanged, or at least sufficiently unchanged, so that this could be still described in the same way. As performed today, the Metu Paki is divided temporarily into several sections or stanzas. Each stanza is repeated at least once, but usually twice or more. And with each repetition, the moments are also repeated. Each stanza ends with a shout, do. And there is a short interval between the next stanza begins. The performer, the performers accompany the movements with singing and chorus of men and women with one or more musicians keeping time on hololog kongs, usually sings with the dancers. This dance has come down from ancient times and was performed for the Tuitonga, the sacred king on ceremonial occasions such as the Inasi, first fruit ceremony, at which, which time the people brought quantities of food to the sacred king to ensure abundant harvest in the future. Ryan is going to show you a little video of the Metubaki. Bye. 
the other dance recorded in Cook's journal is the Me'e Laufola. It's a type of dance which is a group of both men and women participated. Me'e Laufola means dance, Me'e, reciting Lau with moments of a type called Fola. That is moment that unfolds to an outreach position. String instruments, including ukulele and guitar, furnish the accompaniment. The rest of the group, as well as the instrumentalist, sings what are known as hivakakala, or sweet songs. The third dance is the fa'ahyula, oula. It's a women dance that has been passed down in the oral tradition since the 18th century. In conjunction with poetry and percussion, 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 sorry, from a roll mat or drum, it is usually performed by girls in elaborate traditional costume. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to Otuhaka, which means row of dance movements. It is a traditional Tongan group dance with prominent Samoan influence wherein the performers are seated and make gestures with their arms only, with some accentuation from head and body. Originally, the Otuhaka was performed by older, chiefly ladies only, who were supposed to be too old to stand. Very often, a Otuhaka was followed by a Yula performed by their daughters standing or any young chiefly ladies. Like the Ma'ulu Ulu, parts of the performance is on the beat is on the beat of the music only and part of it with additional singing of a chorus. Today the Atuhaka can be performed by men and women of any rank. But as dance it is less popular than the Ma'ulu Ulu as the words and dance movements are prescribed by traditions. Yet, every dance master of Punake who is conducting, conducting this dance has a different version, which he claimed it is the right way from ancient times.
Mako is a fast-paced dance which is performed by young men, accompanied by an extremely fast rhythm on a drum, tin can, or music. Dancers perform wild gestures involving their entire bodies and point in various directions, run, sit, roll, or lie down repeatedly and in quick successions. Mako is a modern and popular dance that in, invigorates the warmth of mafana and excitement of performing during special occasions. So far, any questions? Next, we have Tau Olunga. The universal, this is the universal dance of Tonga, is Tau Olunga. The origin of the Tau Olunga was adopted from the Samoan Tau Olunga during the 19th century. And it is for virgin young ladies. And many consist of a series of hand movements which interprets the meaning of the song. Many of the typical chesters or haka are standardized and have their own name. Also important is the head movements with the eyes following the hands. Otherwise, they are facing the audience. From time to time, the slight movement of the head with one or two beats is made, and she is always, always smiling. The movement of the body coordinates with the legs and have to follow the hands and head. Most of the times the legs are standing still, knees, knees must be together and bent or tablalo. Taking small steps or turn around can be performed. But overall, her movement should be controlled and graceful, at ease with her whole body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Soke originated from Futuna and it was called Eke. The javelins are replaced by sticks, long sticks for the men and short ones for the women. I have here, this is the short ones that Useful for the 
the women's, and they have long sticks for the men. It is performed with long decorated sticks that are struck on both ends as the dancers from a shifting pattern to the rhythm of the drum, tin can of music, and accompanied by a chorus of singers. A single vaca or boat consists of four people, two men and two women. As most tongue and dances, the whole performance is to dazzle the spectators or to please the chiefs. Okay. Next up is the Kailao. The Kailao is from Uvea, adapted by Tonga, and is, and is usually performed in public and private ceremonies. The men's bearing, bearing stylish clubs dance in fierce manner that emulates fighting all to the accompaniment of a beaten slip drum, a tin can sets the temples. The kailao is performed without singing. The sequences of movements to be performed by the group are called by the leader dance, who will give them the name of the sequence and will signal when to start. The sequences can involve mock combat between dancers, changes in formation, and tricks involving the Pate Kailao themselves. The dance display the dancers' disciplines, obedience, and skill with their weapon. <laughs> A third feature of this heritage is that Tongans have borrowed and adapted a number of art forms from other island nations and made them their own. The Kailao, originally from the islands of Uvea, is a recent addition to the Tongan performing arts. Unlike most other tongue and fiber, the Kai Lao is performed only by men who stylize short spears. There is no singing, only the skillful handling of the spear the percussion of feet and drums, and the energy and enthusiasm of the dancers. By the way, I have here a couple of pate kailao. This is what they use for the kailao. I have some laying around that the kids use for the kailao. So we're going to talk about ma'ulu'ulu. Ma'ulu'ulu is a indigenous dance performed by the Samoan people. It is one of the several dance forms and choral song styles that were adopted and adapted into the kingdom of Tonga during the late 19th century through cultural diffusion. The techniques and choreography now differentiate the Samoan Ma'ulu'ulu from the Tongan Ma'ulu'ulu, although their common origin continues to be celebrated. The seated and kneeling formation of the Samoan Ma'ulu'ulu are the most visible components of the Tongan Ma'ulu'ulu analog chanras. 
of Tonga. The Tongan Maulu'ulu in its current stylistic performance is more like the Samoan Sasa. Most frequently performed large group dance in Tonga is the Maulu'ulu of Samoan origin. <laughs> Seated on the ground, men and women intermingling, the performers are accompanied by drums. The dance movements are accomplished by the upper body. Before we continue, I'm going to share a brief history of the late Queen Salote and how she encouraged and emphasized the arts. During the reign of Queen Salote, there was a national increase in maintaining Tongan identity and preserving heritage through arts. She is known as the master composer and poet of her time amongst her people. She focused on very metaphorical poetry and composed the poetry for 42 Laka Laka. The music and choreography that derived from her music and movement specialist named Vili Pusiaki feature very precise hand and arm movements and music that uses old melodic elements from earlier Tongan performance genres. For Queen Saalote, the Laka Laka gave her the opportunity to respect Tongan values and still provide commentary on matters of import regarding the nation. This included her personal views, retention of national and cultural identity, and structural acceptance of Tongan government through the arts. Queen Salote became the foremost mm. poet and genealogist in her nation, taking pains to gather, teach, and preserve the very best Tongan traditions and customs. Sanote encouraged the arts in ways that made dancing and singing an enduring part of the Tongan nature. She espoused the enduring love of being Tongan in her subjects. During her reign, the palace grounds and the surrounding compounds became the center of cultural activities. Tall, majestic, and gracious, Queen Zalote was more than a superb poet and statesman. She was preeminently a mother and grandmother. Laka Laka, we're going to talk about Laka Laka dance. Laka means to walk, and the reduplicated form Laka Laka means to continue walking a step out. The Laka Laka in its modern form was originated by Tuku Aho, a high chief of the Ha'atakalaua of the Takamotong. His punake, Fineasi Malukava, who developed it from creative ideas based on the Me'elau Fola and goes back to a contest, contest for composing dances based on a sort of walking step. Each village Lakalaka laka develops what is distinction about its history and its performers and many villages have Lakalaka laka names that reflects their passion for their tongatans. Some villages emphasize their special duties to the king, while others emphasize ritual occupation or famous scenic or historic, historic sites. The poetry is sung by a chorus of men and women who along with the dance leader stand behind the dancer and by the dancers themselves. The music can be described as dance polyphony often sung in several parts. Movements are based on three parts of the body. The legs and the feet are used primarily to keep time and added color to the performance. The head often makes a quick tilt to the sides, called a fagateki, which is primarily added to the discretion of the dancer. The hand and arm movements serve to el eliminate, enhance, or hide the meaning of the poetry. Here is taken not to approach a subject direct directly, but rather indirectly through metaphor or heriaki, making reference to a subject by going around it and enhancing it with layers of meaning. In poetry, musical tent setting and movement.
Composers of Laka Laka are known as Pulotu. A composer of the poetry is known as the Pulotu Ta'anga. A composer who adds the music and the rhythm is known as the Pulotu Hiva. A composer who adds the dance movement is known as the Pulotu Haka. But when one can compose poetry, music, and dance movements, he or she is known as a Punake a most distinguished and elevated term. Laka Laka belonged to a special village of which they were composed and expressed local and village identity. No other village should perform the Laka Laka unless commissioned by a member of the Ton Tongan monarch. The Milolua Laka Laka from the village of Kolovai was given its present form by Ivanisi in 1931. It was created for the 13th birthday of King Tavahau Tupo IV. It is based on the mixing of the cover for the Tu'i Kanokupolu, which has been the duty and responsibility of the people of Kolovai for, the, for generations. The poetry alludes to the birthday of the of the crown prince, his genealogy, genealogy, the circuit cover ritual, and the village of Kolovai. After the introductory section, in the usual standing position of a laka laka, the dancers sit cross-legged on the ground, sing the poetry, and perform the movements that traumatize the cover mixing. The singers are assisted by the langitua, a large chorus of men and women while the dance leader keeps the time from behind the dancers. And then Kuwata, before we play the clip, we have a question from Epi, um, who asks about the Laka Laka. Have the yes. men always worn shirt on top when dancing? I've also seen, I've always seen photos with shirts on, she said. The Laka Laka, with what I have known, is always with the shirt on, showing respect to the chiefs and to the king. Um, the modern, uh, modern um, fiver or the dance, like mako, it was imported to Tonga. So most mako I seen and danced was with no shirt. But Laka Laka is one of the res respectful um, dance was performed. So they wear the shirt as a respect to the chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> to add to the Milolua, this dance was created. It is consist of repeating patterns uh, as most Tongan dances, the uh, Asian Tongan dances. The Milolua is only, it's only performed from Hihifo, Kolovai to be exact. Though those are the, that, that is the village that, that held on the, the, the traditions to, to the Milolua. And they are the only one that goes into the palace with this fiver. Milolua is from uh, Kolovai. And I think that is, what I have prepared for today. Uh, for this time, if you have any question, go for it. So please feel free to unmute yourselves and go ahead and um, ask questions for Kuwata today. So, uh, so isn't that this, like all the dance you just described, the name and everything, is it a specific day those dance are dancing or you can dance every time you want it? Because living here to go a Polynesian Wedding, they always do the Tawalunga, but I never see them dancing all the dance you just described. So is it a specific day all those dance or dancing, or you can dance every day you want? Thank you, Maria. Um, 
like I explained before, Tao Olunga is the universal dance. So they, they use that in every occasions. And also there are several dances that's only for special occasions like the laka laka, uh, ma ulu ulu, because, and because sometimes you have to have a lot of people to, to perform those type of, of, of dances. Laka laka, ma ulu ulu, me etu upaki. You have to have a lot of, a lot of people. Um, if like the mako, um, da olunga, we don't need that much people. But yes, to your, to, to your questions, there are several dances that only get performed with a request from high chiefs. Thank you. So then my follow-up question for that is um, when I've been at Polynesian functions, specifically Tongan weddings, and um, there's a boy who represents a family, not a girl, is his performance still called the Taolunga or is it considered a mako? I would believe it's still a Taolunga. Um, he's representing the family. Um, the mako side of it, I believe it has to be more than one person in order to it to call a mako but to dance to taolunga you know how modern is they they just will just put you or put me in the costume just to represent the girls doing the taolunga but it's still considered a taolunga even wow. though it's a it's a boy or men are, are, are doing it wesley hingano asks why is the mako considered modern is it just because it is a newer dance form, not as old as other Tongan dance forms? That is his question. Yes, it is, my friend. Um, it is considered a modern dance. And of course, it was brought to Tonga. It is not an original Tongan dance. It was adopted to Tonga. And, and it, it is, but that's like more the favorite, famous dancing dance nowadays, especially here in the U.S is the mako but it is a an, an a modern it's considered a modern just because it's it was adapted to tonga not created by tongans i hope that will help your question the next question is from sina she asks does your performing group consist of tongans only or are other islanders in it as well but i i kind of laughed when i read that question because uh, Sina, I'm Kuata's only non-Tongan student to date. So <laughs> that, that answers the question for you. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone is welcome to join, but here's my only Chinese Tongan student, Ryan. The next question comes from Kole Kuma. He said, is Hiko considered a dance type or just a game? It is a dance type. The chuckling, it is. Um, Kole Kuma, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk part of it, but it is one of the, one of the ancient uh, Tongan dance, traditional dance is Hiko. There's many books about it. Um, and it's, it's my, there's a group here, um, Tahuri Kakala. They are, they're, they're mostly girls. They're all girls dance group. And they, they, they performed the Hiko and it is original. Uh, my name is Richard uh, from San Mateo, and I, uh, I was really interested in seeing the Samoan influence on a lot of the dances. Uh, that's really heartening to see. Uh, was there any other influences from any other islands uh, as far as Fiji or any other islands like that on our dances? Yes, uh, there are. There are um, many other dances like um, the Soke, the Meke. The, the, the Soke was originated from Futuna, mostly by the Catholic um, missionaries. And they brought it to Tafahi, which is another island in Tonga, and then to Niwa Fo'o. And as you all know, Niwa Fo'o, it's a, it's a volcano island and was erupted in the 19th. I don't remember the year, but it came from there to Ewa and then from Ewa to Tonga Tapu. And, and that's, and that's my, my, my village signature dance is the Sohoke Malfanga. Every, every, every function, in the palace, at a big occasion, only Maufanga can perform the Soke. It is, but it's originated from Futuna. Uh, Soke, uh, sorry, Mako, it is originated from Uvea, I believe. So some of these modern uh, dances, we are adapting it from other islands, but we have the power to do that. The next question comes from uh, Sina Uiti again. Um, do you give 
Any background of the dances when you perform at events? We don't, but it could be done because most of, of the events that we go to is just Tongans and they are bored to listen to the backgrounds. They just want to get to the action and to the entertainment. But yes, it's a good idea when we do go to, uh, to function with where there's no Tongans. The next question is a very good one. It comes from Lei. Um, they said, is the Hiko song translatable? I've heard it is such ancient Tongan that people haven't been able to translate the words. Is this true? It is true. It's hard to translate, but I have the book that it has all the translation on it. Um, I was in contact with this lady that went to Tonga and do the research of, on Hiko, but she has the book that got all the translation words for words in her book. And he, she has a documentary on YouTube. Um, you can search, what is it? I think the chucklers.com and you will find some more info on it. The next question, uh, Epi is reading my mind. Is there a process to go through to be taught by a Punake to be selected as a student? To me personally, no. If you want to learn and you're willing to learn, you accept it. Asian days, I believe there were a, a certain, um, say a rank, uh, um, rank that you must have to be, a, be able to be a student. But nowadays, it's more than if you want. If you want to be taught. If you want to, yeah, it's available for everyone. Everyone can. Can join. The question from uh, Kole Kuma is, is the E Taolonga new? Is the Taolonga new? It's considered, it's considered modern because it's, they're adapting it from the Taolonga, from Hamoa, from Samoa. It's not, it wasn't original, originated from Tonga. Oh, he's asking about the fan Taolonga. I understand now what he oh. meant by the word E, as in the fan. E. fan. Oh, yeah. yes. I, that I, 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 growing up, I haven't seen, I have never danced a tongue and dance with a yi or a fan. So my answer for that, I would believe it is a modern. And only dance with the yi is from the Fijian. When I, I, I perform Fijian dances, I use fans. That's, that is the only time I use fans is for the Fijian dance. But it's possible back then when I, I wasn't around that time that might, they might, wouldn't, might have, have fan dance that I, I didn't know about. And then my question too was, um, when we were preparing for this, I noticed that you left out that Tao Faka Niua, uh, which is the Niua war dance. So I, I guess my question is a no brainer, um, but it, I just kind of wanted to reconfirm, like, is it just people from Niua that are allowed to display that dance? Mm, not necessarily. Um, the Tao Faka Niua is, it was, um, ad adapted to from other islands, but I'm not quite sure why they call it Daufra Niua, but everyone can do it. I, I believe it, it's the, the words that they use. Uh, sometimes the wording of the dances that even to me have no idea what does it mean, especially the Metupaki. Some of the wordings have no clue. Even the Punak, some of the Punakis don't know what the meanings of it, but it it did pass down from generations. The Taufaka Niwa, like I said, yeah, we, I have to do some more investigation on it to find out, but it is for sure, it it was adapted from other islands. It, it is a modern uh, dance. And then uh, you have a question from Hokulani. She, uh, they ask, as an educator, any advice you have for those of us in higher ed in regards to keeping our culture alive in its most authentic form. Practice, practice wherever you can. Uh, like me, um, growing up back in Tonga, I try to practice and learn from Asian Punake that I grew up with. Some of the dances and movements these days, it's modern and it's too many add-ons. I, I try my best to, to practice what I came, what I know when I was a kid so I can keep it with me. Dances, dance, dance, dances and, and forms, it's, it's always changes uh, as the year comes. But if you can hold down and practice 
the old dances that you grew up with and, and the teaching of your old punake, I think you'll be okay. So Vaira is sitting around the corner from me. She's weaving. But her question, because she's comparing to uh, her islands in Tahiti, if you want to be a Ra'atira, like a punake, it's, it's anybody to choose to be a Ra'atira if you wish. And I guess her question in comparison to Hawaiians where kumus have to give their blessing to their student to become a kumu. She's wondering where the Tongan culture lies on that spectrum between total freedom and total rigid rules. Can anyone become a punake or um, can, do you have to get the blessing from your punake, et cetera? Palace, you take that inside the, to the palace and the king will determine that you, if you are a punake or not. If they say yes, they'll give you the title and the name. And if you say no, then you have to just go back and try again. Wow. It kind of sounds like a Hawaiian. Is that a same style life? Like, did the Tongan um, copy Hawaii, I want to say? Or like, took that from Hawaii too? Because all the dance, like I understand, you guys yeah. take from it's, it's It has only, always been like that with Tongans because like me a lot of people consider me as a punake myself I am not a punake I, a I don't have the title it was not given to me so if, if I needed to be a punake I have to go through a process and then go back to Tonga and if they can approve me then good if not then I'll just come back to the U.S. Um, thank you so much for this this is fulfilling one answer I get when I ask questions about Tongan culture with my many family members is I don't know because it's so routine that they probably don't question where or why they do find they do things. It's important to be able to know and share these things. So thank you. Thank you again for this Malo Alpito. That was from Kole Kuma. And thank you. Sina, thank you for you, having us. Sina says Malo e puke puke fonua. I say you go for the Punake title and take KPA to test out your uh, new composition. So we'll go, we'll roll to the palace with you and that way you can get the blessing from the king. <laughs> if only you're coming with me, then everything will be okay. I have to bring Vaidea too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, um, if there's no more questions, I would like to take the time to thank Skyland College and to Ryan for the opportunity that you guys giving me so I can share some of the knowledge and the history of tongue and dance. Is there any more questions? There were other questions actually. Uh, you oh, have go for another it. couple. One was from Lei. Um, I've heard that the royal family has ancient cultural traditions that would include our original dances prior to churches coming to Tonga. Have you heard that? Yes, I, I heard that. There were more before, even before Captain Cook came to Tonga. And you guys know that Captain Cook named Tonga the Friendly Island. But there were no generals of those back, back days. So we are going off with what we have on the generals from Captain Cook and even the books that are um, from Queen Salote. Those are the only information that we have. We do know that, yeah, like you say, Lee, we do know that there were, there were um, dances and history back then, but there were no, no, no information or, or, or journals so that can we learn from. On, on, on a read. I hope that helps your, your question. The next question was from Hokulani asking, do you have a podcast? <laughs> no, I don't. Sorry. Hopefully in the near, near future we'll come up with some. But I have another question, um, Kuata. Yes. One of your students want to be a punake. Did that student need to ask you the permission to be Punake or he have to go in Tonga and get the blessing from the king? He has to pass me first. If, if he doesn't dance up to expectation, then what's the use of going to Tonga to get the Punake title? <laughs> the punake, like I understand, the Punake needs to be uh, the king who gives his blessing. Yes, yes. I don't know about now, but 
but um, from what I know, traditionally it has to be approved by the king. Okay, Ryan, you have to be going again. <laughs> Just go. Uh, not even. Thing, Ryan. Uh, I, I would never overstep my <laughs> my boundaries with that. If anything, it would be it would be Kuata Nia's son. That guy's fire right there. Oh, just kidding. He's definitely next in line. That's that's my my teacher and other teacher right there. Afi. So I have another question too. I, I know it's a lot. Um, I just learned about someone Tongyan culture. Lady. Yeah. Um, on the Taiwan Lunga, I know it sounds kind of funny. Why people threw money on that girl when she danced? What, what is the concept of throwing the money? Because for me, as a Tahitian, when I saw that, I told my husband, why they do that? I feel, I feel, I feel rude to see that. And I always ask him, why? Why they threw money? What is the concept of throwing money to make her rich? Or, you know? <laughs> um, and in Tongans, uh, especially, when you go to Tongan function, of yes, it's more like an appreciation donation to whoever is performing um but now like you said back then it was you go and just put your money on the on on the girl that's dancing but now they throw the money they they, yeah. they yes that's more destructive from back then um but it is more like a tradition for tongans to do that um i still have to, another question for the tawalunga yes <laughs> it's why when a girl dance, a man jump in front of her and have to step off. Like last time I saw that, um, Ryan jump on the front on the front of a girl and she didn't step on him. What does that mean to step or not um, step on that person on the floor? I cannot really speak for Samoans. I thought it was Tongan and Samoan. No, the Tongans are copying it from the Samoan. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, but sometimes the the. When when a, a, a girl is, is doing the Tao Olunga in Tongan, um, there is someone, the men, will stand behind behind the, the dance, the, the Tao Olunga girl, and Fakatau Pasi. They call it Tula Fare, or Fakatau Pasi. Um, her main purpose is protect the Tao Olunga girl. So the, the, the Mali or, of, of him will make um, the, the, the Tao Olunga girls feel more confident that she's have someone behind her to packing her up and supporting her. The, yeah, like I said, I can't really say uh, for Samoans, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. How about the costume? Is it all the girls have to wear the same type of costume or there's a specific costume for each dance, especially for women, I'm talking just women. Like the Tawalunga, I know they have to wear the tapa. Yeah. There's other thing that they wear on the top, but is it like that for every dance or? There's certain costumes to certain dance, Tawalunga. Like the Ula, they have certain costume for Tao, for Ula. Um, Hiko, they have certain costume to Hiko Tawalunga. Laka Laka, they have certain costumes. So, but the modern days, whatever the punake or the moms makes, that's what uh, the 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 girls or the Taolunga girls are, are wearing, or what they agree on. But back then, it, it was specific, specific for every costume for every dance. That's so awesome. I really love the workshop. I learn a, a lot right now with you, Kuata. It's powerful and thank you again and thank you skyline it's it's really a good workshop you are doing right now kuata thank you thank you appreciate it okay i got a follow-up question for the fuck up Ali question <laughs> yes go for it it's that um i was i'm i i get i get i see mixed things i guess i'm wondering if it depends on the family i this is what i i'm wondering about is um it looks like some girls walk off with the fakapale, but other times they, uh, all the money that's from the fakapale will go to the nobles that are there. Is that what's the correct thing you're supposed to do? It depends on the occasion, on the or the event. Um, like our luau, right? It's supposed we have, we it's a fundraising, so we have to collect all the money. But sometimes the kids just run out with it. But if there is a chief um, in the ceremony, that it's has to yeah it, it the the right way to do it to collect all the money yes like it says to after the dance and we'll present it to the chief 
or the or the wedding couple or the birthday girl or whoever's event it is but that's the right way to go about it but you know how the kids they want their share too so we can't really chase them around <laughs> And then Lei asked um, that the Uvea Islands speak Tongan, but it sounds so ancient of the Tongans who first traveled there. Have you thought of researching how much of their dances are our original ancient dances? And she said, sorry, I'm so interested in our pre-church indigenous history and just wondered. It, it's so amazing. Um, now I'm into looking at how the Uvea are dancing and speaking. Those Uvea and Tongans, those are the closest in the islands. Some of the Samoans we understand, but mostly Uvea and Tonga, it's, and, and they are so close. Um, and the way they dance, the mako, it's so interesting that it's so similar, um, but it is true. Yeah, we gotta, I have to, to do some research and, and follow up on that, but it is. It could be our relatives or, or bloodline somewhere, but it's so awesome. Thank you, Lei. And Lei, um, Vairea, who's from Tahiti, she has a lot of her cousins who married uh, into Uvean or Walisian and uh, Futuna families because they, they live in the capital of French Polynesia. But what we've seen with their culture, um, it's, it's unmistakably Tongan. I mean, they wear the Taovala, uh, they, they have Kalapus in Tahiti. They're all Uvean and Futuna <clears throat> immigrants. Um, it's, it's, it's undeniable that those islands were Tongan before or something similar. I don't know. I've heard different things about that. I've heard that they were their own people and then the Tui Tonga left their uh, big influence. But I mean, I think the linguistics don't lie because they speak so similarly to Tongan. It, that, that, that's, that's what we've seen from uh, some of her family members over there. Pretty and just to, to add on, um, in, even in Fiji, right, there's a, a, a group or a village that's called the, the Lao group and or even an island that's where that's where um, the Tong most of the Tongans they uh, during the war back then um, they stayed back and and, and married um, got got uh, married to Fijians and now they Fijian and Tongans and and some they 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 stay with the traditional over there but they most if you go to that island it's mostly mostly they speak Tongans and they do a traditional uh, back then, they brought to Tonga, I believe, there's a meke, but it's more like a laka laka fakafisi. Uh, it's a laka laka dance, but in the form of Fijian, um, laka laka. So it's interesting. I have to, all these islands and all these, they, we all tie together to through cultures and dance. Hi, this is Lay. Sorry, I was trying to just message my my <laughs> questions. Um, but I just wanted to say malo al pito kuata. It's so awesome to have this conversation like Kole said Kole and I are family too um but uh like Kole said a lot of times with our family when we ask for history um about the dances or you know just different traditions it's it's so easy for our, our older family members to just say oh I don't know just do it. So this conversation, um, I mean, I, I appreciate it so much. It's it's so awesome to see the dances that you do online um, when you're sharing what you do with the youth. I, I mean, I just sit there and I just watch it because it's um, it's really amazing to see how much the youth are um, so into learning their facial expressions, their hand movements, you know, even your youngest that you have dancing. When I see him, I'm like, oh my gosh, he dances like he's an adult, like he's been doing this for so many years beyond his age. So thank you so much for, you know, everything that you're doing. It's so inspirational um, to see that um, you are continuing our traditions and you know, sharing our culture like this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Lee. Appreciate it. Thank you. So Vyria had another question. Um, she was explaining while Lee was uh, sharing her feedback, but I guess um, her question is for Kuata and all, all other Tongans in here is how much of the Samoan language um, has influenced the Tongan language? I guess that's what she's asking because she sees that 
Samoan dances were taken from Samoa and uh, converted to their Tongan versions. I was trying to explain to her what I had asked you one time, Kuata, about that. And Tiki explained too that the, the language you speak to royals, I believe, is more similar to the Samoan dialect. That's why Tongans who um, they're not used to speaking that way. They always have the like the paper in front of them reading the speech. Um, but if you can clarify that, that that that's what she's wondering about is the relationship between the two languages. So the two languages, like I said, it, it, it's so, it's, it's, sim, it's this uh, unique way and simil, similar ways that we can understand the, the, the someone's language, but not as close as Uvea. Um, we have to sit there and, and, and think about what the someone is talking, it's saying, but in Uvea, it's, it's no brainer. When they say something to us, we automatically understand it. And, and to the high ranks in Tonga, they have the three steps of languages that applies to people, chiefs, and to the king. So you have to really know who you're talking to and address them in the right way. Um, but I see a lot of Samoans, um, they do really rely on their chiefs. So you have to address them according to, if you are going to present your gardens or your fruits to the chiefs, you have to prepare a talk. And yes, Vailea is right. When you go to the to the king or the chiefs, you have to address them accordingly to the language that we've been taught ever since we grew up. It, but sometimes it comes from your heart. Hopefully that will answer Vailea's question. But how about about the dancing? When you guys dancing a Samoa dance, do you need someone from Samoa to translate the song, the latest you're dancing, or can you understand? Quick. The tongue, the, the, the way if we do a, da a Samoan dance for um, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have to to replay and play the songs over and over again in order for us to adapt to what are they talking about. Um, and some the tongue and way it was to me the way I teach my kids. I try to interpret the song and to use new movements, even though most of the of the dances they already have it on YouTube. I try to do my own 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 version of it. So um, to be able to to understand any other um, islands language like uh, someone's, we have to really listen to it, or we sometimes find one find a Samoan friend and ask them, which is simple. It's the same for me as a Tahitian with my two sons. I do the same thing. If I don't understand any language from my island, yes. I, I text one of my close friends to ask him, like, ask that person to help me. So I totally understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Arturo asked, where do you teach? I would really like to know about the culture and be respectful by knowing the correct terms. We we host it. Um, we had, um, at 1919, we, we have a studio here that we used in Menlo Park. Uh, you can get all the info from Ryan. Um, 1919 Menalto Avenue in Menlo Park. Um, we are using um, Nona Studio, studio um, captivating dance by Nona. She's very kind and let us use the at the studio. So feel free to stop by, like Kole said, after the Colonna. And then there's another great question by uh, Hokulani asking, what's one thing you feel Tongans who didn't grow up in Tonga miss out on? To be honest with you guys, respect. If you didn't grow up in Tonga, then you don't know what respect is, especially these generations. Even my own kids, I chase them around every day to teach them. I use the, the so sticks. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, respect is one of the, the main things that the kids here in overseas missed. Of course, back home, they have all the beaches and stuff. But to me personally, it's respect and love will always be with me. So, yes. Okulani follow up the question to say, uh, I agree. So how do we teach that out here? <laughs> it's pretty hard, but you test it, teach it with examples, especially at home. Everything starts at home. Ogulani Vaidea said with the soke stick. <laughs> yeah, Evan just said it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus the sticks. <laughs> Before we start to wrap up, um, I, I just wanted to thank you all for being here, especially staying past the hour. 
um, and showing respect, especially for um, the culture of the kingdom of Tonga. I think it's um, something that we, I always say it to, um, well, my wife and I always say it, but we always say, it, you know, folks that uh, are not Polynesian and say they love, they love the islands, they love Polynesian culture, but we always say, um, then the first thing should be respect for the Polynesians that live with us here in the States, which is our Samoan and Tongan community. That should be the first and foremost thing um, that we're sensitive to and, and respectful of and not think Polynesia is so far and this, you know, um, it's far across the ocean and we, we really should be mindful of how well we um, are respectful of the community here. So that's very important in our household. But we're just glad to have this opportunity with Kuata and um, for Skyline College to continue Pacific Heritage Month is, is very important, especially because our, our our college has so many Samoan and Tongan students. So if any of you here would like to collaborate with us for a workshop, please let us know. Um, next week on Tuesday, we have our college lecture series for our fourth Pacific Islander Heritage event, which is going to be with Dr. Allison Tintianko Cubalis. This is a free event. Um, if you follow us on uh, social media, we'll be posting the link there, but we hope to see you there as well. And Kuata, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for sharing your culture and your knowledge with us. We truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Hello.